Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Digging Into God's Word. Can you believe how quickly Lent has passed by? This Sunday marks the beginning of Holy Week with what's commonly known as Palm Sunday. In many circles, it's also called Passion Sunday. There's a lot going on this Sunday, and we have a bonus reading to explore because we're combining Palm Sunday and the last few days of Jesus' life. Let's get started. This video is probably going to be a little bit longer, so go grab a snack and a drink and get ready to dig in. In many churches, this Sunday, the service will begin with a gospel reading and a Palm Sunday processional. The gospel reading for this special start to the service is an account of Palm Sunday found in John chapter 12. In these few verses, we hear about Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. He's making a final approach on his journey to the cross. Holy Week begins on Sunday and leads us through the last days of Jesus' life. This reading actually picks up with where we left off last week, and if you remember last week, we heard about Jesus raising his friend Lazarus from the dead. Many saw this happen and believed in Jesus, which upset the chief priests and the Pharisees, who were then plotting to kill him. Some time passes as they're plotting, and then on the Sunday before he's crucified, Jesus enters into Jerusalem. There's some interesting things about this reading to point out. First, the reading talks about a large crowd. There were a number of extra people in Jerusalem that week for the Passover. It's hard to say exactly how many people were there, but some scholars estimate that Jerusalem went from having about 20,000 people normally to having anywhere between 60 and 80,000 people there for the Passover. Jesus enters Jerusalem, and part of this crowd hears that he's coming, so they gather up palm branches to wave and they cry, Hosanna! Hosanna is a word that we hear in scripture sometimes, and we also hear it in our liturgy, but you might not know what it means. It's a word that means save, and it has a sense of save now or save please. Jesus rides in on a donkey to fulfill the prophecies and to show his humility, unlike other kings who ride in on strong horses. We also see that Jesus' disciples don't understand what's going on, and they won't until after Jesus is glorified. Sometimes we wonder how this big crowd could go so quickly from praising Jesus and celebrating him being there to shouts of crucify him just a few days later. Some suggest that it was a different crowd, but a more direct approach may say that they were just like the disciples, not understanding what was going on. They were just following the signs. A blind man is healed, a dead man is raised, and they didn't understand that these signs were pointing to the suffering servant king of Israel that had been promised so long ago. We hear more about this suffering servant in our Old Testament reading from Isaiah chapter 50. It's the third servant song in Isaiah. If you recall, Israel had turned from idols and had been punished by being exiled to Babylon. This week falls right after chapter 49, which outlines the restoration of Israel. God's servant, who's acting as a redeemer for Israel, speaks. And in his words, he also foreshadows Jesus, the redeemer of all people, including Israel. The words that we're most familiar with may come from verses 5 and 6 where it says, The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out my beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. God's servant proclaims that it's because the Lord God has helped him that he will not be put to shame. Our epistle reading this week is from Philippians chapter 2 which in the last year has become one of my favorite portions of Scripture, especially when we're talking about how we live our lives as Christians. Paul begins in the verses before our text by telling them not to live in rivalry or conceit, but rather to count others more significant than themselves and to watch out for the interests of others. Paul answers the question, why do we do this, in our text for this week. I don't know if I can really explain it better than simply just sharing the words that he's written he says, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, 
Being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Jesus is God, and yet he put aside everything to become a servant for you and for me, dying on the cross and being raised to new life. He now reigns over everything in heaven. You and I both have new lives in Christ, and because of those new lives, love and service can flow out toward others. I mentioned before that sometimes we have a variety of readings to choose from, especially for the Gospels. Usually this re- means that there are just more or less verses to make it longer or shorter. But this week, we actually have two readings from one book and a third from a completely different book. Two of the readings come from Matthew. One is a shorter and a longer version, and the third one comes from John. We can either read Matthew 26, 1 through 27, verse 66, or just 11 through 66, of verse, or chapter 27. This is the part that deals with the Passion Sunday. It's something that overtook Palm Sunday in the middle of the 20th century when churches noticed that people weren't making it to Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday services, leaving, some felt, unprepared for the joy of Easter. To remedy this situation, Palm Sunday started to be called Passion Sunday. So this account from Matthew encompasses everything from Monday, Thursday, until Jesus is taken off the cross and buried. We'll hear about things like the plot to kill Jesus, how Judas went to the chief priests and sold him out, how Jesus and his disciples celebrated the Passover, how Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, how he predicted that Peter was going to deny him, how Jesus took his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray, and while they were there, Judas led the soldiers out to arrest him. Then we'll hear about how Jesus is brought before Caiaphas and the high priest and the whole council as they try to figure out who this Jesus guy is. And while they're doing that, Peter's outside denying that he even knows Jesus. Then we'll hear about the council turning Jesus over to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor, who's concerned about a riot, and so he finally allows Jesus to be crucified. Finally, when Judas sees what he's done, he kills himself. Jesus is then mocked, beaten, and crucified. He's put on the cross and insulted again, and finally he dies, and he's taken down and is buried. This is a really quick overview of everything that happens, and it hardly does it any justice. That just means that you'll need to be in church this week to see it all in depth. And it may seem like a lot of extra services, but we have a wonderful opportunity to journey with Jesus all the way from his entry into Jerusalem through his glorious resurrection with stops along the way where we continue to see him demonstrate who he actually is. If you don't have a church home and you're in the Nob Noster area, I'd encourage you to come and join with us for this Holy Week journey. If you're outside of Nob Noster, find a church that's meeting on Thursday and Friday, and even an Easter vigil service if you're lucky on Saturday, and join with and take a few moments to see Jesus as he journeys to the cross for you. God's blessings on your Holy Week observation and as you study his word.